Moving on with one-sided limits. In the last video, we introduced one-sided limits. And basically, it means that we just look at each side of our x value individually. If we want to look at the left-hand side, then we would go x is approaching our a value from the left or to a negative power. And if we want to look at the right-hand side, we look at x is approaching a to the positive power or from the right-hand side. So in the last video, we figured out how to do these if they gave us a graph or a visual. And now we want to figure out how to do them if they give us a function, meaning what computational techniques do we know? Well, we're going to use the same exact computational techniques that we did in the first section of finite limits. So let's review what that was. The very first thing that we did was we substitute in our x value. In our first case, if there was nothing weird happening, we didn't have any problems, then whatever resulting value we got was our limit, meaning the limit and the function, just like back in college algebra, were actually the exact same thing. So nothing strange was happening there. If we got a something divided by zero, then our limit did not exist because there was a vertical asymptote at that point. And typically, um, the limit from the left was going to positive or negative infinity, and the limit from the right was doing the opposite. So if the limit from the left was going to positive infinity, then the limit from the right was going from negative infinity, meaning our answers don't match, and then therefore the limit did not exist. The last situation that we saw happen was if we got 0 over 0 in our rational or our fraction function. That meant those things canceled out, but we probably had to do some more work to get there. So maybe we had to factor, maybe we had to rationalize if there was a square root involved, so we had to multiply by the conjugate, or I left part C blank, meaning you might have to be creative to get those guys to cancel out. So let's see how we adapt these now to do our one-sided limits. So everything highlighted in orange here is the twist of the one-sided limits from the finite limits. So to start in the exact same place, we go ahead and we substitute in our x value, ignoring the plus or minus. So if we had x is approaching a to the positive, meaning from the right-hand side, we temporarily just ignore that it even has this, and we just substitute in x is approaching a. Because if there is no problems in that situation, then we have our resulting value, meaning our right-hand side of our limit is the exact same thing as the limit in general. So we don't have to do anything extra just because it's a right-hand sided limit, because our right-hand side and our left-hand side and our limit of all places match in the middle. Now, in situation number two, that's when the answers really change. And this is where most students get tripped up because they forget to do the extra work on this. Okay, if we get a number divided by zero, the same thing is happening. The limit itself, meaning as x is approaching a, does not exist. But we don't care about the limit itself. We most likely want to know as x is approaching a from the right-hand side or as x is approaching a from the left-hand side, not as x is approaching a. So again, there's a vertical asymptote there. So if we want the one-sided limits, our answer is going to be either positive or negative infinity. We just have to figure out which one, the positive version or the negative version. So what you need to do is you need to plug in a value close to x or close to your a value on that side that we're specifically looking for. So if we're looking as x is approaching a from the right-hand side, we plug in a number a little bit larger than a. Or x is approaching a from the left-hand side, we plug in a number a little bit smaller than a. And basically, we only care about the positive or the negative because, again, our answer is going to be infinity, and we just have to figure out which version it is. In situation number three, notice there's no orange highlighted things there, so nothing changes. 
And we actually have a last situation. We have a fourth situation, and that comes about if we have a piecewise function. Now, hopefully you learned about these in college algebra. If not, I will try and review them again here real quick. And basically it says we just plug in the appropriate piece. And again, I'll cover that in an example. So now that we know the formal process or the formal computational techniques, let's see some examples of one-sided limits. So my first example here is the limit as x is approaching 1 to the negative, meaning from the left-hand side, of x squared plus 1. If we go back and review our techniques, we see that the very first thing that we should do is substitute in the x value, ignoring the positive and negative. So we're going to substitute in our x value of 1 here, ignoring that we really actually care about the left-hand side. So I type in 1 squared plus 1. Now again, the mistake that I see most often here is when people see 1 from the left-hand side, they have the tendency to think that means negative 1. That is not the case. We ignore the negative, and we actually don't substitute it in at all, just 1 from the left-hand side. So 1 squared gives me 1. If I add 1, that gives me 2. So that means my limit as x is approaching 1 of this function, x squared plus 1, is equal to 2. Now, if you're thinking about this, the problem was not as x is approaching 1. It was as x is approaching 1 from the left-hand side. But this actually does better than that. If we know as x is approaching 1, because I just substitute in 1, is equal to 2, that means my left-hand side and my right-hand side both actually equal 2, meaning my limit itself is also equal to 2. So I really can substitute in from the left-hand side, from the right-hand side, or leave it blank altogether. So if I wanted to look at this on the graph, if I look at my graph at my 1 value, both sides of my graph are going to be approaching to my y value of 2. So if I actually sketch the graph of this, this is a parabola opening up with the vertex at 0, 1. So it would look like this here. So if I trace it from the left, of course my y value is 2, because from the left and from the right, are all equal to that number there. So we don't necessarily have to look at the left-handed side limit by itself if all of my limits, such as in this example, are all going to be the same place here. So this is where I'm going to stop this video. And in the next videos, I'm going to keep working examples of finding one-sided limits when they give you functions such as this.